Hello, this is James from James Films, and today I've got a combo tutorial contest with Scan the World. I hosted something with them a couple weeks ago, which was a lot of fun. It was a video that I worked on to show you how to create a really neat desert scene using 3D assets that they have available for free on their website. If you haven't checked that out already, it presents a couple really interesting concepts that you can use for a variety of different renders. So definitely check that out if you would like to learn a bit more. So for this video, I wanna walk you through how to do photogrammetry yourself using you know anything from a phone to a professional DSLR camera. So photogrammetry is becoming even simpler. There's been a lot of new developments uh, to really make it exciting. I've even seen LiDAR being used with the latest iPhones to do 3D scans. One of my friends, Curtis Holt, has a great video about how to use LiDAR to make 3D scans. Check that out in the description. For this video, you can use something as simple as your cell phone and just go out into the world and, and scan something. So photogrammetry is the method we use to archive and recreate 3D objects, sculptures, and monuments. So step one is actually to take the photos. You need to have some photos in order to create 3D models, obviously. So there is no correct number of photos to take when photo scanning a sculpture or object, but it's recommended to take at least 50 to capture the most details possible. But some sculptures could require hundreds or thousands of images to really get an accurate scan, depending on the detail that you're looking for. Always try to take more photos than you think you'll actually need, especially because some might not come out as you expected. You might have some blurry ones, you might have some you know, out of focus or, or noisy ones that you've gotten, uh, but you wanna maximize the number of photos that are actually really nice that you can use for your 3D scan. So definitely take a lot more than you think you need. You should try to get as many angles as you can about your object. Your first set of images should basically show the whole object as you rotate around it at eye level. Then try to take additional images at different levels of elevation, but keep in mind that each photo should overlap by at least 60% or so the image before. This just helps your software as it's processing the images, because if you're making these large moves or you kind of forget to take a photo as you're transitioning around the object, the 3D software kind of forgets or really doesn't understand how to piece the images together in 3D space as it's compiling your model into a mesh. But it is important to note that, you know, getting a 360 view of your object isn't always possible, especially if there's some object obstructing it or if it's at a high elevation, or sometimes if you're using like a drone or something to do a 360 photo, it's tough to get the drone into a tight space to get those images. But just try the best you can, you know, grab as much information as possible and then when you're actually using that model in your software, like Blender, for example, you can kind of choose to show it from the best angle of the object that you have. So remember to get some information about your object or sculpture too, and this is gonna be important for the contest that we're hosting here. We're looking for something that, you know, has a lot of meaning or value to you. Uh, it could be a sculpture that is, you know, in the middle of your town or city where you live, or it could just be some object that you have that's been in your collection for you know a number of years and is really special to you. Just get some information about it because what Scan the World is trying to do is essentially make an archive of these objects in their database so we can kind of capture history and, and sculptures and the world in 3D scans, as the name implies, Scan the World. We're scanning the world here. You wanna make sure your images are correctly exposed. This is exceptionally important for photo scanning because how bright or dark your image is could have some issues when you're going to scan in the 3D software. If the image is too bright or dark, the photogrammetry software won't be able to recreate your objects. Smartphones should automatically change their settings to expose your images correctly, but if not, a lot of them allow for manual control for exposure. For DSLR, you could use the auto setting without flash, or if you're comfortable with manual settings, you could use this as well. Personally, I find it the best approach to use manual just because you can really adjust your settings for the environment and know that you're just gonna be taking a lot of photos over the course of a couple minutes. So your setting or lighting really shouldn't change too much between images. One way to tell if your image is correctly exposed is to look at the histogram. Many DSLRs can show you this right after you've taken a photo as well as any good photo editing program like Photoshop or GIMP. When you're looking at histograms, you wanna make sure that the information is generally well-centered, almost like a bell curve, kind of in the middle of your frame here. 
You don't want any information pushing too far to the left, meaning the image is underexposed, or pushing too far to the right, meaning it is an overexposed or washed out image. We're trying to aim for that curve to be roughly in the middle there to give us the most information as possible so we're not clipping our shadows or our highlights. Lighting your object is important, so try to get it as evenly lit as possible. This is not always doable, obviously, but just try your best. It's best typically to photograph when it is very overcast outside because you're not going to have too many harsh shadows on your object, so everything is generally going to be really well exposed for you to take pictures. You don't want those strong shadows and really harsh highlights if it is too sunny and shiny on your object. Photogrammetry software loves sharp, in-focus images to work with. This is paramount. This means having the camera in focus and making sure that the camera is stable when taking the image. Motion blur caused by the camera moving will actually prevent your object from being recreated oftentimes because it's just too you know, fuzzy for the software to kind of understand what it's looking at. If you're shooting on a smartphone, be sure to not enable the fake depth of field effect that can be applied on some modern phones, as this is not true depth of field, it's, it's digital, and can cause some issues when you're actually trying to compile your images in 3D software. If you're shooting on a DSLR, try to use a small aperture, large f-stop, like f8 and above, to ensure as much of the sculpture is in focus as possible. You don't want too much depth of field, you don't want too much blurriness in your image, it just confuses the software. Noise. This is another big one. So noise can heavily mess up processing during your photogrammetry. It's most commonly caused by having the ISO too high on your camera. For example, when you're shooting in low light, you might ramp up your ISO. But other visual noise can creep in, like dust and dirt on the camera lens. So just make sure your camera's clean before you go out and take pictures. While you might not see it in the image at normal viewing scale, the software certainly does. It's very sensitive to these things, and it takes it into account during calculations. Challenging objects. So photo scanning typically works best with objects that are solid and matte. Glossy objects like the hoods of cars or windows often cause a lot of issues because the highlights created can produce abnormal results in photogrammetry software. So as for software, the free software Meshroom, there are a variety of different options that you can use out there. I know a lot of people use Reality Capture, but it's quite expensive for just a couple scans. So for this one, for just entry level, getting into photo scanning and photogrammetry, it's best to use something that's free to just kind of get your feet wet and see how it all works just to understand it. So as for the contest, we had a lot of really fun entries for the previous contest I did with Scan the World, and it was really nice to see all of the work that you guys put into that. It's really awesome, really blew me away the response that we got for that. And it was exciting to know that you guys want to see more of these contests on the channel here as well. So Scan the World has once again partnered with me to host this competition where the winning entry will actually get a high quality SLS print of the scan that's sent in. So a bit about the contest. The contest consists of creating a scan following this tutorial, either sending raw photos or process models works for this one, and sending it to stw at myminifactory.com. The link is in the description for that using WeTransfer, Dropbox, Google Drive, or, you know, your favorite file sharing platform. The scan will have to come with a description and story on why this is an important piece to you. These are the only rules, so really have fun with it and explore and, and see what you can create. You know, get out there and, and scan whatever objects that you have in your area, your, your city, your, your town, or just, you know, a little collectible item that you have at home. The most interesting story and scan like I said, we'll win a high quality SLS print of that scan, which will be sent at the end of the competition. You can actually submit multiple sculptures to this competition or objects and just have fun with it and see what you can create. This is a great opportunity to practice your skills with 3D scanning, as well as with Blender too, with cleaning these models up. If you want some more tutorials on how to do some photogrammetry, a fellow Blender user, Peter France, has some phenomenal videos. And I've linked to two of his videos in the description. This first one actually shows you in a little bit more detail how to use Meshroom to create some of these 3D software or 3D objects. And then his second one actually shows a really great technique for reducing the poly count of your meshes as well using another piece of free software. So check those videos out if you want to learn a bit more. I've also linked to the 3D resources page on the Scan the World site where they have a ton of useful information 
on all things 3D, all things 3D scanning.